All right, so I'm here in my uh, BMW M235i, and I thought I'd show you guys a full MHD tutorial on everything that I've learned uh, with the app and how you can tune your um, BMW just with your phone. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so when you buy MHD on any sort of tuning website, there's going to be a couple things that you can buy. You can buy um, like some standard OTS maps and other things, but I would highly recommend you just buy the Super License. It's the most expensive one but it comes with absolutely everything and unlocks every feature that you need for tuning your car. Um, I paid around £450 for that, it was about €500. Euros. And then you've also got to get this adapter. So this is the new um, Universal MHD adapter which just plugs into your OBD port. And this was around €85, Euros, so about well, around 80, 80 quid um, plus shipping. So pretty expensive for what it is, but it is really useful. So let's get straight into how, how to do it all. So on your phone, you're going to download this MHD. It's called this MHD F and G. It's basically for the F series and the G series. And then it's going to bring you up to this. So it's pretty simple. Once you've got your license code and stuff emailed to you when you've actually bought the license, you're just going to want to go to my licenses and fill it in. Um, you will have to put the OBD port in the car. So if we do that now, I'm going to unplug my um, like digital screen thing, which is just down here. And then you can just plug this. It's pretty simple. It only goes in one way. You can just plug it in just like that. And it has a little orange light. That will also turn off as well. It has a sleep mode, this newer version, so that it won't actually drain your battery over time, which is really good. So if you guys do want a video on actually how to set up the license, um, then I can make one. Just leave a comment below. It is pretty simple to do. Uh, once that's plugged in, you're going to want to go to your settings on your phone. And as you can see, it, mine is already just connected. It's super simple. It'll just connect really easily. And then you can go back in the MHD app. So now what we're going to do is just turn the ignition on. So no feet on the pedals. And just going to have the ignition on. I'm just going to turn my heating off and my lights off just so I don't drain the battery loads. Make sure like, your heated seats and all that stuff aren't on either and you're not playing any music and you should be good. So they do recommend for when you do a map that you actually connect your car to a battery charger. However, that's not always convenient if you're out away from your house and you want to change the map. I've noticed that if you've gone for a pretty decent drive, um, it does show you the battery voltage on the app and it's usually pretty high. Obviously, if the car's been sat for a week and you haven't driven it, don't go and map it straight away. Give it a good charge so the battery's pretty full and you should be good to go. Otherwise, you could risk corrupting your ECU like I did on the Mini, um, my JCW, which cost me a lot of money to fix. So, when you've connected, you'll see the Wi-Fi icon up there. And then what you can do is these buttons here, um, Flash Custom App, these are all kind of like custom things which I haven't really figured all out yet. So, to keep it simple, you just want to stick to the top one. It'll say connecting here. And then this is where all your map availabilities are so i'll run you through it now so stage one pretty self-explanatory if you want to go completely back to the stock map um, how the car came out of the factory then you can just run that um, i have run that just to see what it's like and i must say i didn't enjoy it too much uh, at the top here you have your octane or your octane uh, rom so these are obviously your fuel like kind of what kind of fuel you're selecting so as you can see here it says 91 octane 93 and 95 or 95 ron 98 and 102 so it just depends what you kind of prefer this is also your gearbox what you want to select so i've actually got a manual in my car so you can select manual but obviously if you have any sort of auto then you'll select one of them and then you've got the other selections for the different tunes so stage one you can run that on a completely stock car so you don't have to do any modifications hardware wise um apart from well really nothing if you want to do stage two it's recommended that you have an upgraded downpipe because you will risk kind of ruining your catalytic converter uh which obviously ain't great but you know you do you do what you want stage two plus uh upgraded downpipes and front mount intercooler i have been running this this map and all you've got to really watch out for is on here as long as your intake temperatures aren't skyrocketing mine are staying around 20 degrees celsius done a couple of pulls and it's been a, gone up to about 27 degrees celsius maximum as long as they don't really creep above 40 because obviously then that's going to start messing up your ignition timing and all that uh, with the heat that's going in because obviously the intercooler is not doing a good job i mean it is quite cool outside so i wouldn't really run that if it's going to be like 25 degrees out obviously that wouldn't be great 
bin men have come to collect the bins. Uh, stage two, high pressure fuel pump. This means that you obviously have to have downpipe and an intercooler still. And then you also have to have a, an upgraded high pressure fuel pump, whether that's from a B58 or that kind of stuff. And the last one, stage two hybrid, that just requires that you also have an upgraded turbo, a hybrid turbo, and obviously all the other mods. Multi-map, this is kind of one of my favorite ones because I sometimes let other people drive my car and my favorite thing that I can do is I can limit the power to be about 60%. So it's fairly slow compared to what it would be tuned, which is quite handy if you don't want it to bin them. So what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do multi-map because that's, in my opinion, the most, uh, my, my favorite one out of all of them. So I'm gonna be selecting the stage two plus as well because today we're running this on the dyno. So I actually wanna be pushing as much power possible. So it's pretty handy on here. Uh, you can select what fuel, but it's pretty handy if you were out and about and you ran out of fuel and then the garage only had, say, um, if we click on it, let's change the fuel to, if it only had 95 octane or 91, then you can select that. So I am actually gonna make my map three <coughs> 91 octane while I'm at it because occasionally there's some garages where I don't actually have super unedited fuel. So I'm just gonna keep that at the 60% power and 91 octane. But the rest of them, I'm gonna keep on the 95 because I do always run it on Tesco Momentum, etc. Then you wanna click on it and it will say contacting. And then you don't wanna click map right straight away. You actually wanna go into options where you can change a few things, which is the best part. So I'll quickly run through you guys what's in this menu. So at the top, uh, you kind of want to ignore that. Don't worry about that top one. You have active anti-lag. So I've selected this to be on a top boost target. So you can run about 12 PSI. If you want to see a tutorial on how to run any of these things, then leave a comment below and I'll make a video on it. No lift shift. I haven't really gone into that yet. It's a pretty handy thing, but I haven't really figured it out. Um, apply linear throttle mapping, of course. Uh, my exhaust setup is obviously straight pipe, but obviously you can only select aftermarket downpipes. Remove top stop speed limiter. Uh, you've also got to increase the i drive, so that increases the i drive um, values on there, which is pretty handy. And disable start stop, which I have done because that's a pain in the ass. This is kind of the M2 exhaust um, kind of like kind of fart it makes after you've built a boost, so you can select how long you want to run that. Uh, long isn't really long, so I'm still running it for long. Um, because I didn't really think the long one is actually good enough. And then I've kind of kept the exhaust burbles really soft and not very long in my map one, because my map one is kind of like what I want to do for, you know, racing and all that kind of stuff, where I don't want to have the loud bangs, etc. So you can change any of these. They're pretty short. The aggressiveness is on soft, and then you can select the minimum and the maximum RPM that these um, actual exhaust burbles come in. I'm going to change that up a little bit to about 5K. And then you can select the minimum speed and then obviously the max speed that these work. Cold start noise reduction, I'm going to keep that on. I will show you that. My car is currently stone cold, so I'll show you how quiet uh, my straight pipe car is on that. I've done limit power, power by gear. So first gear is just on 90%, seconds on 96, just so you don't spin as much. And then all these bottom ones I've kept completely stock. The coolant target, uh, coolant target, all that does is it runs a slightly different map to keep your coolant and oil temperature a little bit colder so if it's on stock they can get they can creep up pretty high whereas if it's on sport or track it keeps them pretty cold which is pretty handy when i say keeps them cold i mean my oil temperature when it was on stock was running about 115 degrees celsius and my coolant was about 110 whereas now my coolant's about 95 and the oil staying around 100 so it just keeps them at a more sensible heat level you can select map 2 then and this is where i have my exhaust burbles on the maximum i've set them to as short as possible and on the aggressive as hard so this basically makes one loud really loud bang instead of multiple ones because it goes up to 2.5 seconds as you can see on the maximum here but it's too it's so long honestly you'll like go deaf it's ridiculous so i've only set them on 0 0.2 map 3 i have no exhaust burbles at all and also on map 4 i also have none so you can go back now and we're going to press map right Again, no heating's on, lights are off, no heated seats, etc. And you just want to press map right. And what this will do, you'll see it all come up on the dash. It'll say connected here. And it's going to come up with a load of fault codes on the dash, but this is all completely normal. And as soon as you see a percent going up, it'll be pretty quick. Yeah, as you can see here, it's going up. 15 seconds remaining. So it's rapid when it actually starts going. 
So you just gotta sit in the car, don't open your windows, don't open the doors, just don't touch anything while you're doing this, because you don't want anything to go wrong. So 100%, what it will do then is it will just restart it, code it, and it will also erase all of the fault codes on the dash. You'll see some things come up. My car usually comes out with a front camera warning here. I don't have a front camera, so that's that. Success, wait 30 minutes. So now you can just, you can close the app, you can go back to it and just resume your day basically. And then I'll wait about 30 seconds and then we'll start the car up. While I'm waiting for 30 seconds to go, another really cool thing you can do is it also has live data. So if you don't have one of these screens like I have where I can monitor intake temperatures and all that, you can click monitor on here. As long as you're connected to the Wi-Fi of the adapter, just click on data login and what it'll do, the ignition might need to be on or, or the engine. I haven't tried this without the engine on yet, but it should bring up all the values of all the kind of sensors that the car can display. Okay, so this doesn't connect unless the ignition or the engine's on. So it's been about a minute now. So if I open the door, you guys will be able to hear the actual cold start and hear how quiet this is. So if we go now. And that is, if we get out of the car, that's my straight piped 235i. So it's so much quieter than before with the cold start, it was just ridiculous. That's the only fault that comes up on mine. Um, and you just press okay, and then obviously if you go on vehicle health, it's never there. So I don't know what that's on about. But yeah, these are also your gauges. So this tells you everything, intake temperature, oil temp, coolant, boost, battery voltage, etc. And then you can also, if you had a phone mount, you could have that there, but I got this screen. So yeah, that's basically it guys. If you did enjoy the video and you want to see more on the mapping software, I can make a load more videos. This is just a quick summary of how to do it. And if you guys did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps me out. And any questions you've got, I'll be sure to answer them. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. If you want to see more videos on the M235i, there'll be plenty more to come. But yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.